Bass players, bass players from around the world, Detroit bass players, New Jersey bass players. We in the basement, that's B A S S M I N T, and we got with us, uh, tell us your name, sir. Daniel Spates. Daniel Spates, another Detroit bass player, by way of, uh, where you reside now? What city are you in? I'm in Westland. Oh, Westland, just like me. Right. Um, welcome to the basement, man. Thanks for having me. You know I've been trying to get you in this basement for for quite some time now, man. Thank you for finally showing up, bro. Um, I'm going to want to ask you a few questions, but before we get to that, we got another pa a panel of basses, a whole plethora, a slew of bass players in here today. That's right. From all over the place. And uh, I'm going to start introducing some people. Uh, Brandon Ro oh that ain't Brandon, who was, who was that on the bass right there? Uh, it's Brandon Rose's dad, John Rose. You look like Brandon, you know that. <laughs> also we got in the basement with us, tell us your name. Asmar. Asmar, little Asmar all the way from New Jersey, man. Welcome to the basement, bro. We're gonna have to do it. <laughs> We're gonna have to do an interview with you. Is, he, is that okay? Yeah. Alright, next to him is... A big ass more. Man, man, I gotta do an interview with y'all, man. Thank y'all for coming to hang out at the basement, man. It's like I already did the interview with y'all, but <laughs> But folks, y'all gotta check that out too, man. Also in the basement, tell us your name. Jay. Hey, how you doing, Jay? Hey. You play bass? No. You play any instrument? Mm -mm. <laughs> you like bass players? I like to listen to them. Okay, that's good enough. All right. <laughs> uh, also in the basement, we have another Detroit bass player, tell us your name. Lance Gully. How you pronounce that again? Lance Gully. Gully? Yes. Welcome to the basement, Lance. I'll be seeing you on Facebook, man. Got a, lo a, a lovely appreciation for bass. I, I, I've been noticing that. Don't think I ain't been seeing that stuff, bro. I've been seeing all of all the posts that you do and like check this out. And uh, I think one of them was, uh, was a killer, man. I thank you for posting that stuff. I would have never seen it. Sitting next to him is another bass player. Tell us your name. Adam Bro. Adam Bro. What you what you got with you today? Padula, uh, right? Padula. Yeah. I can I can tell by the shape of the body that's a Padula. Nice bass. Oh, I like that shirt too, bro. <laughs> I, I really like Trying that to be shirt. Cool like you. <laughs> okay. Um. Also in the basement is another Detroit bass player. Tell us your name. Uh, Greg Shepard. Greg yeah. Shepard. Shep. Shep. On um, bass, another Detroit, another awesome Detroit bass player, by the way. And then next to him, we got another Detroit bass player. What's up, man? 
What's up? What's your name? Brandon. Rose. Everybody already know that, man. You ain't have to tell us that. <laughs> 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 another, another awesome bass player in the basement. We also have in the basement. Uh, uh, I don't even know how to say this. He used to play bass. Then he didn't play bass. And now he even picked the bass back up again. Yeah. Welcome back to the family, bro. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and tell us your name. Chris. Chris Willis in the house. And behind Chris is a... Uh, uh, <laughs> behind Chris. Is there somebody behind you? Oh, well, there's nobody behind. It was <laughs> it was somebody. But next to him, we got with us... Uh, 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 the host of the, the Detroit bass players in the basement, Mr. Reginald Canty. Before I forget, my name is Big Ive. Next to uh, Reggie is another Detroit bass player. I like that shirt, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, tell us your name. Big Papa, Tony Bo. And then next to him is another Detroit bass player. And tell us your name. Cynthia Willis. It's a, you know, it's a whole dang on intro i can't get the interview because there's so many bass players in here again i'm big Ive and i got on the same shirt that they got on detroit bass player shirt oh so dan yo welcome to the band basement man thanks for having me um my first question to you is oh you oh, got one cool. too that's cool <laughs> I was blessed with that's this a, one that's a throwback <laughs> thank y'all that's a throwback we, that's the first one yeah um, Daniel, first question I always like to ask is, uh, when did you start playing the bass and why? I picked up the bass about 16 years ago. And the reason why, I used to be a drummer, and a lot of rehearsals or gigs, bass players never show up. So one rehearsal, there was a bass sitting there, so I just started picking up, just messing with it. And the first thing I discovered as far as bass, I was always playing in the key of E because it was so easy. Mm -hmm. So I had to work my way out of just playing out of the key of E in, a, in order to learn how to play bass and scales and what have you, learn how to play songs and bridges and so forth. So I started taking bass serious. At the same time, it was a kind of rough transition because I was playing drums, doing a lot of gigs, and trying to learn how to play bass at the same time. So um, fortunately, 16 years ago, I said, I'm going to just put the drums down and just started being strictly bass player and taking lessons here and uh, going to concerts and uh, talking to different play different bass players throughout the city and just checking them out and checking out their skills and uh, how they play in the bass and the equipment they're using and what kind of contact they're making amongst each other you know like as far as when the bridge when the break or in or whatever so I started learning all that real quickly and started playing with bands myself so now I'm a bass player today okay now if you start going to gigs and the drummer stops showing up, will you switch back to the drums? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm taking bass player now. No more drum. I retired 16 years ago. So. Right, but that but that's a, that's a cool uh, transition because they say it's a you know bass and drums have this bond more than any other instruments within the band. So that transition, you you feel any drums inside of you when you? Doing your thing, you know what I'm Sometimes saying? I do. Sometimes I do, but I prefer to just stay on bass and be up front and do my thing. Okay, so and then when you started playing, when you let's just stick with the bass. When you started playing the bass with others, mm -hmm. name some of the cats and groups that you just started kicking it with, man. Because because the way I know you, I see you every time I see you, you on big, huge stages now. So when you first started. Who was you kicking it with as a bass player? Well, I was learning a lot with playing with Al Hudson in one way. That's one of your um, first gigs on the bass? Not one of my first gigs. Oh, it was okay. the Contours, the Marvelettes, Velvelettes. Uh, it was a Motown group, so they they well known, of course. And I had to uh, like really like buckle down and learn all the uh, James Jameson bass lines. I had to have help because it was hard, you know, as you know, coming up like 16 years ago. I didn't know none of that stuff, so. And I'm still learning to this day. Um, I'm currently playing on a group called Enchantment. Right. I've been doing a few fill-ins for um, Al Hudson in one way. Um, Carl Carlton, The Floaters, uh, Legacy of the Miracles. Um, so the, these are all Detroit, Detroit legendary groups, man. Um, um, 
That's awesome. You, did you use your drum influence network from the drums to get those bass gigs? That's true, yeah. Okay, so I'm like, how you start <laughs> off playing? <laughs> like I was telling you before, just networking and just knowing people, word of mouth, being out there first. When you're out there, you know, a lot of cats, you know, you give you their number, you change numbers, and you stay in touch. And somebody might give you a call say, hey, I got a gig, you know, and it's on. Right, so are you currently gigging with who? Um, Enchantment, currently now, uh, Kimmy Horn, another band called Nightline. Um, I, right now, I'm just substituting for, uh, filling in for uh, Al Hudson when his bass player can't make it, so. That man, you know, that is awesome, man. And, um... Um, I understand you want to just keep getting better, right? You, I always, mean, you you always. still trying to get you got you already got all the gigs because I see you you always performing and, and um you still trying to get better, right? Though. Reason why I got those gigs because I play in the pocket. I don't play a lot of licks. I try to you know just stay in the bottom and just stay there and just ride it from there. But it's important for a drummer and the bass player. They got a lot. Mm. That's the foundation of the group, all the other stuff, just icing on the cake. Right. Man, you know, um, I uh, didn't really want to keep you, man. Right. But uh, in case somebody else had any questions about professional bass players, because this guy, guy is a professional, he's always gigging, doing the big shows, don't even have to take his amplifier. <laughs> to the gig, you know what I'm saying? That's where them gigs are set up for. You just take your axe, right? That's all you need. So, uh, anybody have any questions for this uh, fine basis? Might want to learn something about the pro, pro pro circuit. I have a question about the pocket. You ever play a uh, kiss by Prince? Yeah. What do you do for that? Um, let's see. Right on, right on, yeah. You don't have to be. You have to change, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're lucky I ain't going by octave on Just ride that groove and the drummer got a nice pocket. Because when I do that, I, I started out doing it really, really, really simple. Simple. And, and they kept wanting more, but I didn't want to, like, go oh, nuts. So right. You might feel like you overplayed, but... They say give it no, to him. but yeah, no, I like what you're doing, you know, because, you know. It's simple. It's yeah, it's simple, fun. but it still has, a you know, that upbeat on the pop, you know, okay, which right. is cool. Yeah. Cool. Thank okay. you. No problem. Anybody else? Yeah, one of my favorite groups of all times was Enchantment. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, loved Enchantment, especially uh, Gloria. Gloria. Yeah. You that I need. Yeah. Sunshine. Yeah. Where we go from here. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I didn't even notice that I'm sitting amongst, you know, you. And I'm honored to even just be sitting here, you know. So when I go home back to New Jersey, I got a story for New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you sitting with some you sitting with some OG Detroit bass players in here. Anybody else got a question? Got one. Got one. Uh, I appreciate what you were saying about keeping it simple, simple. keeping it in the pocket. Right. When we talk about supporting some of the music programs and some of these young folks that are coming up, mm -hmm. uh, what we want to do is try to encourage them in ways that they can really understand, keeping it simple and teaching them things like what you said, longevity, mm -hmm. lasting, comes from keeping <coughs> it simple. Exactly. Is there something that you can think of that will be easy to translate to youngsters to help them understand the importance of control, keeping it simple in the pocket, instead of that inclination to really get busy and some people can just get so fancy that they overdo it. And they may actually be harming their ability to get some gigs and what by and just being are. too busy. They are harming themselves by playing too busy because they don't make, if you don't make music, it don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And what I tell a lot of cats, you know, just try to play with a record that's got like a simple groove <coughs> and play along with it <coughs> and try to lock with it. And that's what kept me in time. Mm -hmm. And I play with a drummer, you know, and if he's all over the place, I try to tell him, just lock with me and nothing else. Just lock. You know, but I started playing with different records along with it, and uh, that's how I got my timing together and just try to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Hope that answered your question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it helps. It helps. Uh, okay. Um, anybody else? Yeah, you ever messed with uh, any of the uh, Brothers Johnsons? Like playing music? Yeah. Not really. 
not really. No. no. And I love him too. Okay. My boy, Brother Johnson. Anybody else? Stand the clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old school. I like to listen to like Cameo, yeah, yeah. Confunction, okay. uh, Ohio Players, those groups. You know, you know Shake Your Pants? Uh, no, but I do know Skin Tight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Well, look, we ain't want to keep you, man. But I really appreciate you, H, you coming out, hang out in the basement. Thanks for having me. And uh, Daniel, could you just play us something out, man? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, bass players, Mr. Daniel Spates. <laughs>